So, here we are, cryptos and NFTs. Now, I'm definitely not a financial advisor, but I think I'm starting to see a hustle. But make up your own mind, because this is just the David Watson opinion. So one of the things I noticed, and lots of you will have noticed this, everybody was, for the last few years, have been banging on about cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin and Bitcoin and Bitcoin. Now, I've never got into that, <coughs> partly because I never fully understood blockchains, <laughs> cryptocurrencies. And whenever, whenever I see lots of celebrities saying, I'm not endorsing this, but this is what I'm doing, I want to know how much they're being paid. And when lots of celebrities, influencers, start talking about something and telling you that you should get into it, I'm very suspicious. And that's the same with NFTs, because I've noticed the very same influencers are now all banging on about NFTs. So here's the thing. I get, on one hand, I do kind of get the NFT thing. But only if you're the original content creator. And everybody's trying to sell everything as an NFT at the moment. And if you have got something and it says NFT, it's, it's worth some money. As long as you can put NFT next to it. And someone's going to buy it from you. And it's going to be worth millions. <coughs> and people are making millions. They are making hundreds of millions. But they're the ones selling. They're not the ones buying. And these people, <laughs> grifters, are often the same people that were selling Bitcoin. And this is the thing, is all of these things only have value if you keep buying them. So look, take Bitcoin. If Bitcoin was the way to go or is the way to go, and maybe it is, maybe it is, right? Why are all the people telling you to buy into it not keeping their mouth shut and buying as much as they can with every penny they've got. And the reason for that is the value only goes up if everyone else keeps buying it. The problem with Bitcoin is it's actually no different than any other currency. There's no difference at all. Yes, it's electronic. It can be laundered because it's very difficult to trace. But it's like sterling, the euro, dollars, whatever. It's only worth money as long as people want it. And at the end of it, all you're left with is Bitcoin. Now, just when, like, in the past dollars, the euros, pounds, sterlings have suddenly, I mean, about 10 years ago, I was on a holiday in Ibiza, and it was something like one pound, uh, one euro 70 to the pound. And we were going to Ibiza living like kings. But now it's much more like one euro 15 to the pound suddenly that same pound doesn't have the value it once did against the euro and crypto relies on everyone else buying it for the people before you to make money from it well that makes it a ponzi scheme really or makes it just like any other currency it doesn't have an absolute value that you can grab hold of like, here's a, a possibly a strange analogy, but I remember years ago, you can see a picture of it right there. You can't see my, for some reason my finger's not showing, but you can see that van there, right? A van was a nail of a van, right? But it was my first camper van for when I used to be heavily into surfing. And um, I remember before I bought it, and that picture has got to be at least 10 years old. And I remember before I bought it, I was talking to a mechanic and I couldn't get over the price of vans, even bags of shit. And he said, yeah, but they're practical, they're useful. If, you're, if you have any sort of trade, if you're any sort of manual labourer, worker, tradesman, whatever, a van is practical. So as long as it had a running engine and it could go up and down the road and stop safely and was completely legal, it always had a value that it would never drop below. 
because it could actually be used. The same with any company that has assets. It doesn't Sometimes it doesn't matter how much companies are making. It's what are their assets? You know, why do some of the best hedge fund managers in the world only talk about assets? The reason is when the market implodes or goes down, dips, crashes, you still have a physical asset that has value. That's not Bitcoin. That's not cryptocurrencies. Its value only goes up if everyone else keeps buying it. And I could probably almost guarantee 99% of the people who are telling you to buy cryptocurrencies are either influencers who are being paid there's some form of sponsorship or they make their money from you watching them tell you about it. And that's the same with NFTs. Even Gary V, who's one of the biggest people pushing, if not the biggest person, pushing NFTs, even he's saying, look, it's a bit of a wild west at the moment. So all I'm saying is don't invest your life savings into Bitcoins, cryptos, NFTs, unless you really know what you're doing. And I mean really ha know what you're up to and why it's of value. Because some NFTs, like all artwork, will be worth a fortune. But it doesn't matter if it's worth 10 million in six months' time if, you, if somebody bought it for 20 million today. Now, if you're going to explore anything, explore the technologies behind it. What are the philosophies? What are the theories? That's where the money will be. That's where the smart investors are going to be. And that's not me because I don't understand any of this. But I know a Ponzi scheme when I see one. I know a pyramid scheme when I see one. And when I see people jump from one bandwagon to, the, to another, from one trend to another, and you can see it. It's the great thing about social media is you suddenly see influencers jumping. And you're like, right, okay. This is where you should avoid it. You know, it's, it's like 10 years ago, everybody buying gold. Well, 2008, everyone was buying gold, silver, metals. It was too late. The market had crashed. I used to, back then, deal in, um, have a little stall in an antique market. And I'd put little antique trinkets in there. Always silver. I'd focus on silver. Well, guess what was happening? I'd go to an auction that I used to go to and buy my bits of silver which would then typically be sold to tourists who would go into the antique shop. It was going sky high because the market crashed and everyone was buying metals. And scrap dealers realised that they could get physical silver cheap at antique auctions because people like me were buying them from the point of view as, well, how much is that worth as an antique? You know, how much... Are, is a set of antique silver spoons worth. Whereas they were buying it in weight. How much is that silver worth in weight? And they would outbid us on everything because I knew in a shop I'd never get that money for it. But they weren't doing that. They were just selling it on to be melted down. They jumped onto a trend and they'd spotted the market in the trend. And a lot of what I see with NFTs is people who have a lot of influence People who are very smart are, sell, are the ones selling. The same with people who are banging on about cryptocurrencies. They're the ones with a lot of money invested in crypto. And both of these people rely on ordinary, everyday people pumping their life savings into it. And all I'm going to say is, unless you really do know you know something, don't put your money into crypto or NFTs. Just don't invest in that. And if you want to spend your time researching anything, research the technology behind it that's going to make it all happen. Well, that's my opinion. Why didn't you let me know what you think and leave your comments below.